Donald Trump goes on offense. He's now suing ABC News and George Stephanopoulos. You may remember him from when he worked for the Clintons, but he sat down with Nancy Mace, a representative, and they had an interesting interview. Remember, we've covered the E. Jean Carroll trial here for a long time, and that was the case where they alleged that Trump Bergdorfed E. Jean Carroll in a dressing room at Bergdorf's, and jurors found that that was not true. They actually found him not liable for the intercourse, the hibbity dibbity, but only found him liable for the grab him by the purse, which was the lower level offense. But nonetheless, people like George Stephanopoulos have been using the R word, saying Trump's an R, and Trump R this one, and Trump R this. And there was, in all fairness, that contorted decision from Judge Kaplan, who said that grab him by the purse is kind of close enough to an R, because it's like a digital R, doing DJ diddles, era, 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 and that is now equivalent to R. But the jury found there was no R, which in my opinion, is calling E. Jean Carroll a liar. You said you got R'd. We don't believe you. Therefore, you're lying. So why did they find her credible on the other claims? I don't know. Probably because they hate Trump. But before we get into the lawsuit filed by Trump, we have the quick clip of the exchange that is necessary to watch before we get into the filing so that we know what they're talking about. So this was the exchange between Nancy Mace and George Stephanopoulos talking about E. Jean Carroll. And George Stephanopoulos can't let it go. I still get judged for it today. I'm asking you a very simple question. It, and I answered Explain it. You're why, shaming no, me for I'm my not, political I'm not, choices. I'm asking you a question about why you endorse someone who's been found liable for rape. Just it was not a question. criminal court. This it was, was a civil court. It was a civil court. And by rape. the way, she no, joked about the judgment and what she was going to do with all that money. And I find that offensive. I'm asking you but about as the a rape victim who's been shamed for years now because of her rape, you're trying to shame me again by asking you've, me this you've political question. You've repeated that again I think again it's offensive. As a woman, I find it offensive. I'm asking My political choices, I've endorsed the man that I believe is best for our country. It's not Joe Biden. And you looked at the dueling rallies yesterday in Georgia. Lake and Riley's family was with Donald Trump. They weren't with Joe Biden. The same guy yesterday that apologized for calling her killer an illegal, who was an illegal. And here you are trying to shame a rape victim. I find it disgusting. I mean, you keep saying I'm shaming you. There's you are. I'm, the question, it's, it is. How is the question asking you about a presidential candidate who's You're been asking a rape victim. And there's no question about that. And you're, you're you've courageously my talked about that. Because I've been raped. I think that's disgusting. No, I'm questioning your political choices because you're, you're supporting. Shaming me. You're someone who's been found me. liable for rape. No, actually, I'm not trying to. You are. You. That's exactly. You're not what answering you're doing. the question. I think it's disgusting. Well, you're welcome to say that, but you're also you have to answer the question. Why are you supporting it, someone who's been found liable for rape? I just answered your question. What is the answer? He was not found guilty in a civil in a uh, criminal court or of liable law. at all. He, it was a civil. It was sexual abuse. It wasn't actually rape, by the way. And E. Jean Carroll joked about all the money she's going to get and made a mockery out of this case. And I think that's offensive. There's a reason why women don't come forward. And when you have someone who says that they're raped and they make a mockery out of this civil court judgment, it's offensive to other women. It makes it harder for other women to come forward when another woman has made a mockery you of it. You said women don't come forward because they are afraid. They are afraid they're because judged they are defamed and shamed. by those like who are trying to shame they, me this they morning. Are, they are afraid to come forward, as you said, because they are defamed by those who commit the rape. That's what Donald and Trump has been judged. found guilty of doing. He defended no, himself wrong. Uh, over that and denies that it ever happened, but he was not found guilty in a criminal court of law. He was not found guilty and he was not found liable of the R at all. And the case was a joke, okay? We all know this. E. Jean Carroll was involved with Roberta Kaplan by their own admission in getting the law changed so that they could file this civil claim, reopen up some claim from 20, 30 years ago at, that they didn't even know the date of for a very long time. They didn't even know the year of and for a very long time until they made it up. And E. Jean Carroll is clearly unwell. The two people that she called supposedly after it happened hardly believed her. A ton of evidence was not even in Admitted because the judge precluded it. It was a sham trial. We all watched it. And it was a civil claim that was not criminal at all. And they opened up the law literally to go after Trump. The person who sued and made the victory helped to create the law. And it was all set up by George Conway, Molly Jongfest, who met E. Jean Carroll at one of their anti-Trump parties and connected them so that they could file this claim. It's a political hit. It's a legal hit. They're just identifying all the different attack angles and launching them. So it was disgusting. George Stephanopoulos is a disgusting person has been disgusting for a long time why he's on ABC. So what is the response? Trump filed a lawsuit and we're going to see inside the lawsuit that they have a copy of the jury verdict form that shows that George Stephanopoulos is a big fat liar. You see this one got filed in a nice jurisdiction Southern District of Florida 20 pages. It's Trump versus ABC and George Stephanopoulos liar says here Trump and his counsel now on offense suing ABC and 
George saying, all right, here, George, this is an action arising from George's transmission and publication of intentionally false and defamatory statements made to numerous third parties about the president. And specifically, as we're going to get into, on Sunday, March 10th, George, during the airing of his weekly television show, This Week with George Stephanopoulos, apparently people watch it, falsely stated on several occasions that Trump had been found liable by multiple juries for the R of Miss Carroll, for doing the Bergdorf, all right, for Bergdorfing Miss Carroll. Not true. These statements were and remain false, and they were made by George with actual malice and with a reckless disregard for the truth, given that George knows that these statements are patently and demonstrably false. And indeed, the jury expressly found that Trump did not commit the R, as demonstrated below, we'll show you, and Stephanopoulos was aware of their finding, but he still falsely stated otherwise. Now, George made these statements, which were communicated and published within the scope of his employment, and that's why we're bringing in ABC. They were aware of the truth about the determinations that were made, and they still made these. And there were written notes that he was reading from. So it appears that they were preparing him, and his producer, and his show host, and everybody gave George the stupid script and said, here, read this. Now, ABC also published this, and so Trump is suffering harm as a result, therefore you're being sued. Here's what Trump says. Trump's a private citizen, for now. Get ready, George. Living in Florida, ABC hosts this show, George Stephanopoulos. And they had an interview that we just listened to. Now, ABC News made knowing and reckless false statements, and George Stephanopoulos is a natural person, and you have jurisdiction over him. Now, the reason we're in this federal court is because we have diversity jurisdiction, the amount in controversy, parties are diverse, the amount in controversy, so some civil procedure, we're in the right court. Now, here is where we get to the good stuff, the statement of the facts. This is what Trump is suing for. The E. Jean Carroll litigation matters. Let's get to it. They say, on or about November 4th, E. Jean Carroll filed a single count complaint against Trump. We removed that case to federal court and had a trial. She claimed that she got Bergdorf at Bergdorf, luxury department store on Fifth Avenue in New York. Trump has consistently and steadfastly denied Carroll's false and fabricated and defamatory allegations. But she alleged, and while she does not remember the date, the month, or the year, or the exact decade, and she was all over the place on that. We definitely didn't have an exact date or month. I think we got a year, the second trial. They're like, I think we got a year. And we didn't have the transcripts or video, so I'm pretty sure we got a year of the second trial. But she has no idea, all right? And just think about that. You got charged with a crime. Oh, when did it happen? So I can show you my calendar to show you that I wasn't there or I was over here. No, no date. You don't even have a date to defend yourself. And this is a civil case. It's not a criminal case, but they all claim that he arred somebody, right? And New York created and opened up the statute to allow this whole thing to come forward. Now, she claimed she was walking out of Bergdorf's. She bumped into Trump and he said, why don't you help me buy a present for a woman? And she agreed. Now, Carol goes on to tell some story of an incident that allegedly occurred on the evening. It began as, quote, playful banter, and then it turned into an attack that lasted only a few minutes. Now, in or around 2019, more than two decades after the alleged incident occurred, Carol released a book in or around 2019. All these years go by. Trump's running for office, 2020. Oh, no, we need a new assault attack. Poof, here she has this. In response, Trump denied that the incident occurred in three statements released June 21, 22, and 24, which formed the premise of her defamation claim. So then she filed a separate lawsuit, which related to the original lawsuit, where she said she brought claims for defamation and battery. Now, the claims in Carol 2 stem from the same incident, allegedly taking place at Bergdorf's, but she brought an additional claim for battery, right? Physical touching. In her battery claim, she said that Trump and his actions constituted offenses that include, but are not limited to, the R in the first degree, R in the third degree, abuse in the first degree, and abuse in the third degree, forcible touching and misconduct. Now, additionally, the defamations claims that were also filed against Trump, those were challenging the statements that he made on October 12th and June. Dates don't really matter. So the court held a jury trial, and we covered as much as we could on that one. On May 9th, the jury issued its verdict. We have the form down there below. Now, the verdict form is clear. As for the first count for battery, the jury was expressly asked to render a determination. Did Trump R, did he Bergdorf E. Jean Carroll? The verdict form is clear. The jury determined that Carroll failed to prove her allegation and they found Trump is not liable as to that allegation. And it's good to see Trump finally taking this out on the offense, saying this exactly. We've made this point, I can't count how many times. Did Miss Carroll prove by a preponderance of the evidence, which is the lowest standard that exists in the law. We've talked a lot about this in the other Trump cases, but you know, beyond a reasonable doubt is the high standards up here. We put it at the very top. Then we have another standard that 
that we often talk about. It's called clear and convincing evidence. The lowest standard is called preponderance of the evidence. It's like 51% likely or not. Is it more likely than not that this thing happened? Yes or no? Jury said no. No, not likely. Didn't happen. We don't believe her. She loses a 51% standard. This is the traffic ticket standard, okay, for most states, unless your state has a criminal standard for traffic tickets. It's low, okay? The jury said no. We don't believe you. We think you're a liar. She took the stand and said, I got Bergdorf. And they said, no, you did not. No, you didn't. And then they gave her, you know, the gimme on the next one because Trump says that, you know, the locker room talk, grab him by the purse. Got it. So they just gave her the other one because they hate Trump. But that distinction alone makes me think that they think that Carol is not credible. How could they split it? So George, and by all these people repeating this, right, the jury actually found that they did not. Now the judge came back later and the judge wrote an opinion. He said, well, technically digital penetration is kind of an R and so you can say R. But no jury found that at all, right? They actually found no. Sorry, E. Jean Carroll's a liar, not credible. The jury made a finding of assault, the next one down, and as a result, they found for Carroll on battery and defamation. Now that verdict is currently subject to appeal. Trump's appealing that currently in the second circuit. Now shortly after the Carroll two verdict, she amended count one in Carroll one. Now in the amended complaint, Carroll replaced all of the R words in the initial complaint with assault, okay? Because the jury did not make the finding of R. So even E. Jean Carroll's lawyers herself, they know themselves that they have to amend the old complaint. So then a jury trial took place again. And on January 26, we covered this one, the jury issued its verdict in a single count complaint, finding in favor of Carroll again. And we're appealing that one too. But let's be clear, the jury undeniably did not find Trump liable for R, given the limited nature of that claim. Neither jury in any of these cases ever found Trump liable for R. Never happened. But what happened at ABC? They didn't get the memo, apparently. On March 10th, 2024, at approximately 8.15, George Stephanopoulos conducted a live interview with Nancy Mace. Now, during his terrible show, lasting 10 minutes, Stephanopoulos opened the segment by playing a video of a speech given by Mace in South Carolina. She, at the time at the legislature, she revealed she was a victim of the R. Now, immediately after playing the speech, then Stephanopoulos questioned, how could you endorse someone that's been found liable for R? Eh, wrong, found not liable. Now, given that this was the first question of the interview, combined with the intensity and the persistence of the questioning engaged in by Stephanopoulos of an actual victim, it was clear that he maliciously intended to convince his viewers of a falsity, that Trump had been found liable for the R. During the interview, Mace vehemently objected to the tactics being employed by him because they were beyond the pale and they were patently offensive, but he didn't care. Throughout the interview, Stephanopoulos wrongfully asserted more than 10 times that Trump was found liable for R. Here's what he said. You endorsed Trump for president and two separate juries have found him liable for R. Wrong. Sorry, that did not happen. Nope. Donald Trump has been found liable for R by a jury. Really? Where? Trump has been found liable for defaming a victim of that R by a jury. That's true. But there was no R, right? Liable of an assault by a jury. Also defamatory. It's been affirmed by a judge. Now the judge twisted the jury phrase. The judge said, well, the jury found that there was an assault and a digital assault with your finger in a purse. You know, that's a kind of like an R. So that's not good. Now the judge found that, right? But not the jury. It says, here's George Stephanopoulos again. I'm asking you a question about why you endorse someone who's been found liable for R. It was a civil court that found him liable for R. I'm questioning your political choices because you're supporting someone who's been found liable for R. Why are you supporting someone who's been found liable for R? Look at all these comments from him. Not gonna read them all, you get it. You don't find it offensive that Trump's been found liable for R? You're defending a man has been found liable for R. Even though he's been found liable for R? Okay, like 10 times. So given the actual language and the findings of the jury verdicts rendered in Carroll, George's numerous statements that he has been found liable for R, those were false and defamatory. And these statements were heard by millions of viewers throughout television and the internet. Stephanopoulos was clearly aware of the jury's verdicts, and he knew that Trump had not been found liable for the R. And just five weeks ago, in February 
forth during the airing of his show, he stated in another show, most recently this E. Jean Carroll case where juries have found him liable for assault and defamation. These were juries that found him liable for assault and defamation. Okay, so his little show also reported on it accurately. So they knew. Moreover, on a Good Morning America segment, he also was interviewed. The banner read, Trump found liable for abuse and defamation. They posted a clip of E. Jean Carroll and they said Trump found liable for battery and defamation. No R in there at all. And a particular note, Stephanopoulos specifically asked E. Jean Carroll during another episode, how about yesterday in the courtroom, E. Jean? Let's talk. The first announcement was made and it was that he was not found liable for R. Trump asked E. Jean about this. Wow. What were you thinking at that moment, E. Jean, when they thought you were a liar? Because you are, in my humble opinion. And that's what the evidence shows. Now, given Stephanopoulos' knowledge of the actual verdicts, including asking E. Jean how it felt to be called a liar by the jury, and given his vast experience as a journalist hack, his repeated statements that Trump was found liable for R was false. They were intentional. They were malicious. And they were designed to cause harm. George knew this. He knew they were false, but he made them in any event. And after the interview aired, Trump's representatives contacted Stephanopoulos, seeking a retraction and an apology. But they did not issue an apology, of course. They did not issue a retraction. And they did not direct or request Stephanopoulos to correct the various defamatory or false statements he made during his show. Instead of removing the interview, ABC modified the headline. They changed the headline of a related article. It says, Nancy Mace defends her support for Trump after he was found liable for R. Oops. Ooh, that correction's not good. They changed it to found liable for R to found liable for the assault. They changed the whole headline. Oops, you knew it was bad. The article itself, however, continues to reference the false statement. And accordingly, any action that ABC did take to correct or address these statements, it didn't. It instead republished the defamatory statements and exacerbated the injury. And so since making these false statements, many news outlets have quoted Stephanopoulos by wrongfully broadcasting that Trump was found liable for R. For example, following the interview, Aaron Rupar, who takes everything out of context, is known for his presence on X, who maintains a website called Public Notice, where he covers politics in the media. He publicly defended Stephanopoulos and praised him for holding his ground. Yeah, he loves when you attack rape victims. Says, wow, Nancy gets mad when Stephanopoulos asks her how she can support Trump's claim despite claiming to care about victims. But Stephanopoulos holds his ground. Yay. 7.6 million views on that one. Rupar, among with many others, their endorsement of Stephanopoulos' false and defamatory statements propagated the misinformation. It's a lot of damages. The above reference post depicts the first of a total of five posts contained in Rupar's thread. The first post was viewed more than 7.6 million times. Reposted 5,400 times. Significant reach of that false and defamatory statement. And additionally, the thread contains more info. One of those posts was upwards of 1,100 times. So that was like a second, you know, part two from Stephanopoulos and Rupar. Another post was reposted 1,400 times. And Stephanopoulos is literally defaming Trump in that clip. Well, actually, what you're doing is defending a man who's been found liable for R. I don't understand how you can do that. Another post reposted 1,300 times. A fifth post, he said the same thing. He was found liable for R. Now, importantly, Rupar's decision to selectively repost quotes made by Stephanopoulos explicitly, he targeted the found liable for R clip, right? So George is giving all of the lefty cover. Now, Mediaite News also published an article saying fireworks. Stephanopoulos battles Mace in explosive showdown about her backing Trump, despite jury finding he's liable for the R. They never did. Never found him for that. Relying on the exchange, Mediaite News incorrectly again published the same thing. Liable for R. Daily Beast did the same thing. They relied on Stephanopoulos and his defamatory statements. He said found liable for R. Verdict says not. Morning Joe. Joe Brzezinski married to Mika. MSNBC covered this also. So Stephanopoulos gave them, right, the fake talking point that they could all repost. Daily Cost did the same thing. Shannon Watts, a political activist, founder of Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, says we have a rapist for a president. Now the above referenced articles are only a fraction of the media posts. Stephanopoulos and George, their false and defamatory statements spread around like wildfire. Everybody reposted them. And so this have resulted in damages, a lot of them. And all conditions have contributed to that. And so that's why we're bringing a claim here. Count one, defamation per se. The statements made by George, they were made with actual malice. They did not have any regard for the truth. They knew the statements were false. They published them anyways. There was no factual basis for it. 
Now, any of these are per se defamation, right? If you accuse someone of having like a bad disease or, you know, about their like sexual proclivities and stuff like that, it can be very, very damaging. And so there's different standards. We call it defamation per se. Now, as a result of this, Trump has been damaged. And so now they want an award, including a penalty with punitive damages out of George's booty. Now they say, here's another count for defamation. These statements were made with the intention of lowering Trump's professional reputation in the community. They were like a heat seeking missile trying to harm Trump. So these were intentional acts. They were done with actual malice. They had a video clip. They had producers. They had George with his note cards and everything. And so they now seek an award for punitive damages from ABC News and George Stephanopoulos. This comes from an attorney in Coral Gables, Florida. Shout out to Alejandro Brito from Brito Law Firm out there in Florida. They're asking for a jury trial and I hope they get it because this hoax has been allowed to spread for a long time. Now, what George Stephanopoulos is going to say, I can already see his response. He's going to return with the judge's order. The judge's order says, well, it's kind of our, even though the jury didn't find it, it still is kind of our. And so he transmogrified the assault charge, which was clearly not R, into R so that they could say it. And that's not what the jury found at all. And George Stephanopoulos said the jury found that. So I think that they will have a plausible, you know, deniability claim. They'll try to latch on to the judge's response and say that is cover. But I hope this goes to a jury and a jury can decide whether this was appropriate or not. And they'll be in Florida, not in New York. And so we're going to be here continuing to cover this one, Southern District of Florida, little different environment down there. Maybe they'll have something to say about ABC and George Stephanopoulos. And so we'll continue to cover this one, my friends, when it drops and when the responses come in, we'll see what Trump's team says. Trump sues ABC. They're spreading the R hoax and it's time they get called out and we're glad that they did. So thank you for subscribing wherever it is you're watching this. Thanks for following us as we cover all of this litigation and more. Would love it if you checked out some of the links in the description below. We have our members only community at watching the watchers.locals.com where we do streams in the morning. We do streams on Saturday. We do after parties after our live stream. We would love to have you come and join us. We look forward to seeing you over there and back here on the next one. Mm -hmm.